It will need to be straight, but later. <laughs> later. For he's now. Breaking, he's breaking us out. Half the class just freaked out. <laughs> For now, I'm going to pay it over most of really? it anyway. <laughs> it's your world. So here's what I think is going to work best with this. It's hard with acrylics to get this really bright sunlight. The best way to do it is, we're, and, and to make it not green. Yes. But if you notice, there is some green in this. There's some yeah. green, especially in the water, yeah. which is okay. It works. First thing we're going to do is paint this light blue to purple uh, down to our horizon line. And we're going to paint the whole canvas, but I, I know that this horizon line is going to be there, roughly. There's going to be a bunch. Of... And then we're going to just put some color in down at the bottom. Not the blacks and not the marsh, just the sky colors. And not even necessarily these clouds, just some, some color. So start with, um, I need a light blue. So I'm going to go with, this is ultramarine blue. Some gesso and a touch of brown just to make it not quite so happy. All right, and it's thick and globby here. You're welcome to try to use this paste if you want to. I paint fast enough that I don't need it on this part. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we don't have to pray for that. Burnt 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 it's, burnt it's burnt umber. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it to a good. Close enough volume, put a little bit more umber in it, it's still a little bit blue. That gives it, that leans it more towards like a gray. It's a little less vibrant. I don't want the blue to be as vibrant because my sky is going to be, my sunshine is going to be vibrant. So start with that color. All right, then just, when I'm doing this right here, it's a heavy paint on the brush. Just kind of slop the paint on the canvas and then just use kind of a, back and forth X pattern to kind of work it down into the canvas. As I get down a little further, put a little bit of that magenta. And you yeah. can use any one of those. I have, there's three or four different things similar. All of them are very similar. But that's a soft pastel purple at the bottom. I need to go a little more pink. If you paint fast enough, you can kind of mix this on the canvas as you go. So mm -hmm. Keep that purple on the very bottom and let that kind of blend with what's above it back into the blue. When you're blending colors, you can either go from color A to color B and just try to make a make the paint blend, or you can make a third color that's kind of in the middle, uh, which is kind of what I'm going to do here. Make a third color that's kind of in the middle, and it helps them kind of Blend a little simpler. Now, I'm going to paint over a lot of this. Uh, in the middle, especially. And actually, this is crazy, but what I want to do is as soon as I get that on and I'm happy with it, smooth it all out. Good enough. <coughs> While it's wet, I'm going to go ahead and get a paper towel <laughs> and just kind of Rub out the very center of it just a little. I want some paint there, right? That I don't want as much to have to cover up later. Get out. That can get messy. Just gonna try not to have any hard lines. Just a little bit easier to cover up. All right, next. You notice the color of. The water coming down is actually, um, it's a little different than the sky color. Mm -hmm. Got a lot more yellow in it. I don't have any yellow yet. I'm going to put some, uh, put some of that in later. But what I really want to do with the yellow part and same with the sky is I just want to leave very little paint there to cover up. Mm -hmm. So where I have yellow here, I'm just going to kind of leave that white. So I'm going to start with my, my blue. I'm going to tone it down even more with the brown. <laughs> For these sides, this little plate ain't quite big enough to accommodate what I'm doing here. Yeah, it's too brown. So we'll start with a more gray blue on the sides. I'll scrub that in. This is quick and loose. This painting, if you if you want to try it, 
to do it as, as loose as it is in the picture you can. Um, mine won't be quite that loose, but I'm going to be pretty fast. You can try to loosen up a little. All right, and then I'm going to get that brush somewhat clean. <laughs> somewhat. And then go with white. This is just to have some paint on the canvas. It don't matter that it's not pure white. I'm going to paint over it later. And go vertical this time. Yeah, I'm kind of pulling down some, some streaks in it. If these brush strokes show later, they'll look right. I'm glad. Well, and that means I won't have any of my water. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Niagara Falls. Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly great. what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can tweak fall. the color of this later. Um, we can, you know, obviously this ain't going to be the final color. This is more of a value, uh, a value block in. We're just blocking in these values. And if it gives us some texture later, then we have that to go with. So this is phase one. Uh, go ahead and start there. Yeah. And we'll come back and put some color in this sky. <laughs> the biggest challenge in this is going to be not painting green in the sky as much as we can avoid it and not getting a whole lot of green. Oh, yeah, so yeah. anytime we do layers of yellow on top of blue, we're going to get green. So we got a blue sky and we need a lot of yellow in it. So the next thing we're going to do is paint white. So basically anything in here that's yellow, we're about to do white. So that's... <laughs> Messing with your head, it's better just not look at that. Um, and I'm just going to find the yellow to paint the straight gray. Straight gesso, okay? Every bit of this is going to be covered up. However, this is going to be our final like shape of how things look. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm picked up this old kind of twisted up fan brush because uh -huh. I just wanted to have something just to put the paint on there with. And then I've got this one that's kind of soft, a dry, oh, yeah. just to kind of blend with. I'm going to go ahead and put some water on it. And, Push it out so it can be my blender. So in the sky, I know that I'm going to want, I'm going to put this purple band back in later at the bottom, but I, that's where we'll start. But for now, I know the, the, the bulk of this middle portion is going to be different colors. It's all going to be some color. Make sure you don't have just a UFO right in the middle, right? Because for the sky, all the way I would have a UFO. <laughs> I'm just splattering this paint on here for now. It does kind of look like a UFO. It looks like a dinosaur. Kind of I was thinking that's what I was This is the head down here and the tail there. Look at the spikes up there. So we'll go kind of quick with that and then you can take this little blender and just kind of fluff up. It's, I, I wet it's it just to get the, down. just so the paint wouldn't dry in the bristles, but yeah. Tap the brush out. Barely touching it and just making little circles. Okay, soften this edge. See how that did? Yeah. That's, that's clouds. He does. If you, don't, if you need a cloud lesson, go back there to Ruthie. She would be I'll glad. I'll be glad to help anybody with clouds. So anybody that wants to do clouds. Oh, Lord. But you left a slight amount of the purplish dark below it? Or I, yeah, that's going to gonna, it's gonna be covered. I'm gonna put, we're going to start with purple when we put it in. So I'll probably bring the white on down, actually. I don't like how this is kind of just getting a dome shape. I got a couple of clouds that kind of go up here. You see on the uh, in the picture, there's a few, but I'm going off script anyway from the picture. I'm just gonna. Put some stuff. Not to look at the world. I won't mind. Well, it's not going to be like the hardest part about this is your arm gets tired. <laughs> rubbing those in. Now, hardly any of this is going to be white when I'm done. Right. Just about all of it's going to be yellow or some other color. It's going to be good. It, it is kind of all one sky. I don't want to have Charlie Brown clouds where I have one here, one there. Yeah. So you, do you don't want Charlie Brown clouds? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have one or two here or there. I'm not going to kill it, but I mean, I want it to look like one sky. You don't want <laughs> nine like perfect like clouds across the sky. Right, got you. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know how I am with my symmetrical. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot be That's real. We did, nice. we did, did that stream with all the rocks. I had all the rocks. <laughs> 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 
perfectly lined. Then I went back and tried to change them, and I still lined them all. Up. <laughs> yep. It's easy to do. It's easy to easy to get into that. No, I have the same thing. It's a weird thing up here. You just the wind. Was that bothering you? Yeah, it's okay. The wind is blowing. How can you do it quick? I, I know. I say that a lot. And I can tell by. <laughs> the results, y'all don't believe me. But you're leaving your edges a little more transparent. You're going to take that out. Yeah, it's feathering <laughs> out. Now we're going to come back and layer some yellow over top of this white. So it's going to be, these flowers are going to be more yellow than white for sure. Yeah. So then moving on to the bottom. Um, again, we have a lot more yellow or orange, whatever color that is, than we do this. So I've already lightened, I've already kept the middle of this light. I'm going to pull this off a little bit so I can go off the canvas down here. Although we will have some grass down here to hide it. But it'll look weird if all your lines stop at the bottom. Um, this brush may not be the one to use for this. I can go a little thinner now that I'm doing a second layer. So I'm going to just kind of... Let me get a different brush. Put some paint on there. Now, I did the streaks, and I know we, we all worked and worked and worked on this section. But yeah, I told you it was going to be covered up. <laughs> Cover up like that too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a gradual effect. I'm keeping some streaks. My other streaks are showing through because this paint is thinner. Yeah. Right. Work. Just work a little and go away. Next thing I want to do is I'm, this. Since I said this is like an under color, I want to get that color a little closer to what my sky color is. Um, when you're doing this second layer, though, since you already have paint under it, you can thin it a lot more, and it can. Uh, the, it's okay that what's under there shows through. This is a lot more sky color. Mm, I like purple, so I'm okay with purple. Yeah. Just real quickly. Tinting that color. Everything real quick now. Yeah, I mean, more, more yeah. Don't think about it. Quickly you can it. paint, the better you will like it, I promise you. <laughs> Close one eye. Yeah. the other one. Then, Close while it's, eyes. especially for this part, because while it's still kind of wet, I'm going to go ahead and scrub in a little bit of, a little bit of cloud down here, too. Uh, yeah. Not much. Not as detailed as up top, for sure. But there is a little bit of that same type of uh, effect down there. Yeah, this works best if if what's under it's kind of still wet. Um, just gonna put some working around. This is it's clouds, but it's clouds reflected in in water, so they're not gonna be as detailed and fluffy. So I'm just gonna make them. <laughs> yeah, you can always. <laughs> I'm just so happy about. You can always clouds. tweak any of this. You're gonna have a lot of, a lot of land over here too, covering yeah. most of this up. I mean, then if you really want to just get, jump ahead. Oh yeah, we do. While it's still, <laughs> while it's still wet, maybe put a couple little horizontal streaks in there, just a few here and there. That may or may not ever show up. Mm. 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 Paint over <laughs> exactly. If, if you do get these, make sure they are horizontal, horizontal. not you know, <laughs> sliding around. Not <laughs> That's as far as I want to go with that. I can always come back again with another I layer if I want to tweak that blue color a little bit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll be on the back row. Really well, let's get that far. Let's get that far. I did not do that. This is medium yellow. Yes. Yeah. We usually use light yellow. Oh, yeah. You can use whatever you like. Use the same thing for the whole painting. <laughs> I, I like the medium for this because it is a lot warmer. It's a very warm sky. Mm -hmm. And the, the light yellow makes green quicker, mm -hmm. it seems like. Uh, this is a little more forgiving. Now, this brand, the Master's Touch Yellow Medium, is a lot lighter than the um, Liquitex mm -hmm. Medium mm -hmm. Yellow. So it's a little in between. If you have lemon yellow, that will work, or some kind of primary yellow would work. Just stick with the one you got. Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, that's it. That's medium yellow. It's the same one. Same one. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So here's the thing on this. 
This is not your final sky. We're going to say that every time. There's about 20 more layers to go on this. <laughs> That's this, it? This is a, um, this is just tinting. We're tinting the white that we have yellow. Okay. There is no gesso in this. You remember the gesso has like a chalky, mm -hmm. it covers really good. This is see-through, mm -hmm. especially the yellow. It's very see-through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you put water with it, it's, it's more even more, so. you know, more so. It, it really just makes your white yellow. And it's very, it's a lot more uh, forgiving that way, because if you do wander out into the other colors, especially purple, it's not going to be that big of a deal. And you can put this on and kind of wipe it off. Um, kind of put it on the same way that you did the other, even with a, a second brush. Kind of put it on and kind of rub it in, and it lets you put it on a little at a time and kind of sneak up on it. You can go back and put more layers of that if you want. Now, if you're not using a soft bristle brush, if you're in here scrubbing with a hard brush, yeah. you're going to scrub a hole in your yeah. paint. We're putting so many layers on here, it's going to be easy to get a spot that won't cover if you're not careful. Now, very important, I'm not going to go all the way down into here because I want to start with the purple. We're going to transition from purple to red and we'll show you how that goes. But the color up to where the orange is in the picture, I'm going to go yellow down to that because that yellow, that orange will be, will have the yellow in it. Are you avoiding the blue? Or are you yeah. just doing the white only? I'm trying to just stick to my white. In spots where it goes on it, it's not going to be the end of the world. You're not going to get a, as long as you're not painting the whole thing, uh, you know, the whole canvas that way. And as long as you're not putting straight paint, thick. Right. So we're just doing a wash. It's yeah. very thin, very, very thin, yeah, mostly water. All right. And we're going to go to each of my little clouds. And it, it's not the end of the world if some white shows through. That's fine. Clouds have yeah. white in them. Um, remember the sun's in the middle radiating out. So my color is going to be more towards the bottom of the cloud. So if you can see some shape, if mm -hmm. you can see some shape in your clouds, like that one right there maybe, keep the color towards the bottom of it. Right. Maybe a little. But again, I'm going to kind of blend that out so it's not going to... Not going to be completely dark at the bottom. And this is just one layer. Once I get this on, I'm going to come back, let it dry, put a little more of the yellow. And see, it, it, it already gives you different values right. based on what's under it. This is why I said if you, white's not white, your yellow is not going to be yellow. It's, it's not going to look right. So before you start any of this, make sure, make sure, make sure that what's underneath is bone dry. Bone. You cannot Bone. start this damp paint. It will, you will regret it. <laughs> you will. Some of this out here, if if you got a place with a lot of blue where you're kind of scared to go over it, scared to make green, um, the trick is put it on and wipe it off. Mm -hmm. If you if you put it on there and kind of wipe it off, it'll show up where the white was, right. but it won't show up as much where the where the blue was. And that. It's a little weird. Ruth, you got that? I got it down pat. <laughs> now, again, this is... You were showing him how to do this when I got dressed about 15. This is not... I was teaching him how to do it. Final. <laughs> and it's not going to be beautiful. I didn't like Ruth's show. Bridget was a witness. She said so. <laughs> the next step of that is I'm going to put it in here. Now, I'm keeping my... Uh, and this is just one color. This is not the color that our sky is going to end up. This is one of the colors. So don't don't think it's a final thing. Just that one thing made it look so good. It already is starting to look like a sunset, a little less like a really nuclear explosion. Niagara Falls. Uglier, I don't believe you now. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there is a magic point when we start putting the land in you're going to see it, it's going to pay off all these layers are going to look right um, don't worry as much at the bottom about green green is okay at the bottom a little yeah bit. We got a lot of grasses, a lot of things reflecting. It's okay. It's not going to look completely weird if and you get it's some green down here. So it'll have a little I just, tint yeah. here. I just want to keep my brush strokes down here. If I do put some paint on, I want to keep my brush strokes kind of up and down. And 
that's as far as we're going to get tonight. That's it. As far as we're getting tonight. Uh, made a little cheat sheet for us because these colors tonight are going to be, uh, there's going to be some mixing involved. These are pretty much the colors we're going to use on our sky. Um, and just since it's dried, I've noticed these have gotten a lot darker since it, since I mixed them. So we may want to go even with hair brighter than this. But um, the colors that we're using to make these, we've got ultramarine blue, uh, magenta, uh, this is vermilion, and then yellow medium. And, and a mixture of the magenta and vermilion gives us this red here. Um, I played with the other red just to see what would come up. But this is a better, more true color for us. Yeah. But so we're not going to use either of these colors, these magenta or vermilion, straight. They're always they're going to be mixed to make the red. So we've got a blue, a red, and a yellow. And so if you've ever done a color wheel or you know a color, whatever you call that, rainbow, Coasting. you see the way the pattern of the colors go. If our if we want to go from purple, which is what this bottom line is, to go through all these other colors to get there. If you try to go over blue to get to yellow, if you try to go purple backwards through blue to get to yellow, you're going to have to go through green. So we always want to go this direction, you know. Yes. You don't want to go that way. So if hopefully you've got blue kind of faded down to purple, because the first thing we're going to do is, and I'm just going to use this fan, fan brush because it's kind of flat, but it also gives me um, a little bit of way to kind of dab on some random colors, and then I'm going to use my soft... Uh, blender to kind of blend it softly. So I got some of all these colors. You don't need a whole lot of each one, but I've got a separate plate to to mix them in. And it's got to fade into this purple, but it don't need to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I got to make that red. This is vermilion and magenta. That's going to give me the red. Yeah. And you got to play with it till you get it. It takes a little more magenta, but you got to play with that. And get a little bit of that red. Mm -hmm. From there, I can put a little of the blue, and that's going to give me, that's probably too much, that's going to give me my purple. Mm -hmm. Now, until I put white in it, it's very ugly. <laughs> but when I add the white, and I'll pull it off to the side, because if you try to add white into that puddle and make it, you'll have a plate full of mm -hmm. the wrong color. Never get it to get it right. <laughs> that color, I can tell, is a little too red. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go a little more blue. You kind of just kind of keep tweaking these to get it to where you need it to be. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get the I want to get the hue of it close or the color as close as I can first and then I want to make sure I get the value right or the lightness of it. See that's getting a lot closer see that's about right now if I go into my white I'm going to completely start a new pile over here that color is closer to what I want. It's still a little red. <laughs> so even knowing what color I needed and knowing what I needed to mix to make it, it still took that long to get to this color. So you're just going to take your time, make the right color before you put it on your canvas, and you won't regret it as much later. <laughs> as much. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> It's a little darker than what's behind there, and that's okay. Yeah, we were having a discussion earlier. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's probably about right right there. It's a little different than what's behind there. I'm still a little too red with that. Get back to that just a second. The red is strong. That's more like it. Use less red. Use less blue. Use less. Yeah, less red for sure. And your color may be a little different. But I want to put some of this up here first. Now know that my line is actually going to be covered up. Right. Um, so what I really want to do is just kind of put some of this on here. And I'm going all the way across. It doesn't necessarily have to disappear into that uh, other purple color behind there. I can blend that up to it. I always wet the brush before you put any paint on it, but then I want to get as much of this paint out as and water out as I can. It would be fairly dry. And then you if you just kind of softly do little circles, it'll kind of disappear. Uh -huh. Now, if you don't have white at the bottom like I did, yeah. if yours is yellow at the bottom, take a minute to put some white there first and dry, dry, dry it. 
because if you try to put yellow on top, you're going to get gray. Those are opposite colors. You're going to make a, a ugly brownish gray shadow color. So you need that white under there so that your purple stays purple. Now this is going to be the process for each of these colors going forward. But the yellow is okay underneath for the other layers, just not the purple. Since the, pur for, for the, the purple has blue, red. because the purple has blue in it. When we go to the next color, which is the red, it doesn't have any blue in it. So, the so it's okay, okay that it has yellow under it because it's just yeah. going to make it more orange, which is what we're transitioning to anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, can you hit that with the dryer real quick? <laughs> now, in order to get, in order to get all these colors in here, we're going to have to be, start kind of small. These lines, my purple line is way thicker than it's going to end up. I'm going to paint over some of that. Um, the red is safe to put over top of purple and it's safe to put over top of yellow. Um, but the purple and yellow is the only ones that can't really mix. So I'm going to go into my red. And it's still a little bit orangey for me. I'll put some white in it. Yeah, that's my two colors. My two reds together and a little white. This may, it may look a pretty good bit of. Okay. Oh yeah. I think that color is pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna start there. Now on this one, I don't want to go quite as far out. I'll stop about here. But okay, so I'm gonna. The top half of that's gonna uh is I want to kind of disappear right into right. the into what's above it because it's gonna have some other colors blending with it. So just kind of work that. And I'm gonna come back and do it a little bit better. But the bottom, I don't want the purple to go away at all. So what I'm gonna do with that is since I still got my purple here, and this is why you gotta kind of work quick, I'm gonna come back and put a little more purple under there. If you're not careful, you'll lose your purple. But I want to put just a little bit more, and this brush may be too big for it. I may just use my, just use this. And I just want to kind of just blend those two wet paints together. Now, I've got that paste, that uh, gel. If you want to try to use that, you can. The best thing sometimes is just another brush, just another clean, dry brush. But I don't want to lose, eh, it's a flat brush, it's going to be too flat. But I don't want to lose my purple by blending it too much and making it all red. Just kind of that. Yeah, that might yeah. help that. Just to, you got to be real careful or you'll lose that purple. And I, my brush is... Fading out. I don't have any hard lines to cover up on the next color. <laughs> and I want the sides to fade out. Right. Okay. That's two. That's right. Well, not a whole lot of it. There's just a little strip in there. So again, um, for this, I'm gonna go to a new, a new plate. I'm keeping a lot of plates here. Anytime you're dealing with oranges. You, it's easy to get way too much red. It, it's, it's it's mostly yellow. I'm gonna just go with my red mixture. See how much that red intensifies it. Now, play with this orange because it's yeah, that's kind of an ugly, that's a, that's kind of an ugly color. orange. It's kind of muddy. I think I want to put a little more vermilion. A little more vermilion to brighten it up. So that's too orange, but that's getting closer. And a little white. The white's going to make a make it have a little more of that peachy color that it has. A little more yellow. That's more. That's more like where I was headed, right there. Yeah. Now, if it's too different, um, and see my now that I'm looking at it, my red is not very red. It's pretty uh, pretty purpley already. So I may still have a little too much of the magenta in there. I may need to go a little more towards the vermilion side of the red. If you're trying to blend two colors with each other that don't match, you'll never get it to blend. You need to go colors that are similar 
right. will blend a lot easier. Right. That's getting better. I think that's a little closer Close. to what I wanted. Just put a thin layer of this in here. That'll transition to my orange a little easier, I think. Now, at the end of it, I don't want perfect bands across spots, that's okay. If you do get a little low like that, as long as the layer underneath was uh, fairly dry, use a fairly wet paper towel, kind of damp, and you can kind of expose some of that but I, yeah I don't want to pull too much of that off that's pulling it off the canvas uh -huh. this middle section so you know we're going to put some more white on top of that and intensify the yellow so this is not a final layer this is only only the parts on the outside are even without drying because these colors could blend will go then to the to the orange which I want to come down pretty far this is going to do some blending on the canvas <laughs> Covers, that's good. These colors mm -hmm. are very intense and they're very small strips of them. And but what eventually is going to come out of this is this pure yellow, yeah. uh, which is going to be kind of my next stop on this, on these colors here. And some of you tried to get intense on the yellows. Um, <laughs> Already, man, we're going to get intense on them. They're going to get intense, but it's just a gradual buildup. As I get up into these these clouds here, when I have a little of this on the brush, you can kind of hit the bottom edge of some of these clouds too mm -hmm. while you're in there. Intensify this just a little bit. See how that bottom is not. Not even close. Cool. And as I'm going up, I, I'm going this way, but I'm also coming in towards the middle. And it may not be able to happen while it's wet. But the next two or three phases of this color are just yellow with a little more white in it. Um, and they're more more towards the middle. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard to get this to make any impact while it's wet. Finger paint is always good too. If you work this too much though, you're going to pull paint off. And you're going to hate it. It's about as intense as we're going to be able to get that by putting colors on one at a time like this. Next step, we're going to have to completely, completely dry it, and we're going to have to um, put some white in the middle to make that really bright stuff right in the middle. And I keep saying middle, it's not going to be dead center, it's a little right of center, um, but, but for now our glow is kind of center. So let's get that far, let's get rainbow built, <laughs> mm -hmm. go from there. Rainbow, you guys. <laughs> really bright and tense. This is the star of the show right here, so this is the part that matters. You notice how it doesn't affect this bottom part. We've already got the bottom in here, but it's like a patch of super bright. The only way, like I told you before, the only way we're going to get that to be that bright of yellow is if it's on top of white. Yeah. So we got to go back to where we were before and put in some white. This is gesso still, still not using titanium white yet um, because I'm trying to cover. Now what I want to do though is I want to get this, there's sort of a little, it's almost like a little pocket where the, mm -hmm. where the light is there. So I want to kind of try to find the spot where that's going to be. And is it off center? Slightly. And it's slightly right of center. So what I want to do is create a bright spot. And you're thinking, man, I just spent all that time <laughs> doing uh -huh. that. Now, if you do this over the whole canvas, it won't be a bright spot. It'll be the entire <laughs> canvas. You got, you got to, you know, go 
little little section at a time. It's going to take a couple layers of this. The key though is soften the edges. We'll just soften that out till it disappears. And then on the bottom edge, I want it softer, but I, but I still want it to be pretty straightforward where it starts and stops. I, I don't want a hard line, but I do want a line. See there? Soften that. Just some. Once that initial layer is in, the other layers will be easier. But I want to do a bright white, really intense bright white in the center. And notice how this has kind of got a shape of everything kind of, even the clouds kind of radiating out from there. And if you haven't done this this before, where we do a horizon off in the distance where you're trying to get the land and the sky to come towards you, the rule for that is rule of halves. So if you have, all right, so I'm about eight inches, right? To my horizon line. Mm -hmm. If I marked four inches, and did a line across here. I'm not going to draw it because I'll have to erase it. Then that's half of eight. If I do another half, would be two inches. Would be right here, right? Half again would be here, right? Half again would be there. Half again is here. And that informs you kind of how the layers of how to make it look distant. The sky is the same way. So if you can imagine, things at the horizon are going to be much closer together. And as they get higher up, they're more spread out before you before it's all there. Um, I'm going to dry this. I'm going to do another layer of that until it is just solid white in that center. Uh, go ahead and dry that because we'll, uh, I need to sh you get a little, um, you lose a little bit of your intensity every time you, every time you dry it. I'm going to back and add that. And each time I'm going to each time you blend it, blend it out. But it'll be a little easier because I'm going a little further towards the center. Why don't we just leave a white <laughs> That's much more difficult. That's much harder to do. Then. Yeah, much harder to do. <laughs> While I'm in here, some of this super bright white, I may go ahead and do a uh -huh. couple of little bitty spots up in my underside of these clouds that I can then go back and color mm -hmm. yellow later and make it a little more intense. So that's pretty close. Let's dry this. Let's let you dry this one more time for me. You can just use water. Put a little bit of white with it. A lot of water. And I can dye that yellow and it makes it blend with that background really easily. Mm -hmm. Just kind of scrub over the yellow part. And you'll see already how it intensifies the yellow having the white under it. Mm -hmm. How much brighter that is. Yeah. So my bristly brush is kind of streaks on there. But... All right, it's a little bit brighter. Take the very spot where I want to have my my sunshine there. I'll blend that out a little bit. Yeah, I'll get into finger painting here if I ain't careful. Okay, it's okay that it's not perfectly round. Hit it one more time with the dryer. This titanium white is very different from the gesso. It's brighter. You can tell by just looking at the two, it's brighter. But it also and is thicker. thick. And I don't like to add any water to this. I'm going to use it straight out of the tube. And it's got to kind of decide where your sun's going to be. Just a little off center. So my, so my center's here. I want my sun to be kind of here. And first thing I want to do, put a little spot there and blend it out a little. And I end up, invariably, I end up using my finger when I'm doing this just to soften those edges. And you can do this 15 times and still see yellow through it. Uh, but each time you do it, a little outside of my range here, 
each time you do it, it gets a little bit wider. And it's mostly dry. Like I don't have to really dry in between because I'm, I'm working it till it dries. See how intense that's getting already? More intense it gets right in the center. And the very last thing you're gonna do is just thick, straight titanium white right in that very center. It don't have to be a perfect circle either. It just has to be super bright. And actually, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna come back and put another layer of that right on that spot. But that's about how, about as bright as you're gonna be able to get that glow right there. If you wanna replicate that little bit of glow in any of these spots up in the cloud, you can always put a little there. Just don't get too carried away with it because this is, um, this is the star of the show. And if you put it everywhere, it's gonna get, gonna get weird quick. <laughs> I may want it to come out just a little bit this way. You kind of just gotta step back from it, look at it some, mm -hmm. and see what it needs. But it's gonna take layer and layer in that tiny little spot to get that to just be as bright as it can be. So good luck with that. Um, um, we're just gonna put these little trees in up top. I told you we're breaking some rules for this painting. I got oh, black, black paint. You don't have to mix it. <laughs> it's just black. Um, I'll tell you with this, you wanna put a little bit of water with it, but not too much. Yeah. Uh, Cause you do want it to be kind of solid. And these trees do have a green tint. We're gonna make the black and then we'll come back and make them make them greener. Now, the design of this is gonna be different for everybody because you can't really just look at kind of where the trees are on here because you gotta go with where your uh, sunlight is and you're gonna be putting highlights. So I wanna think like, okay, my, my sunlight's coming from here. I would like some kind of larger tree that can show a lot of light kind of in this area maybe. I don't want to put anything like dead center, you know, right in it. I don't want anything dead center of the canvas. Um, but I'm just going to make some, uh, and obviously some of them are going to have to be taller than others just to cover up my, <laughs> my crooked line that I have here. But this is just a some suggested trees. We've done this a thousand times, just not in black, right? Um, don't try to paint individual trees or, or, or even, you know, limbs. You want to kind of have not a whole lot of detail to it because it is so far away. The more detail you put, the closer it looks, and the more off it will look. So, I really just want to get some paint on there first. And then I just want to kind of shape the tops of this just a little. Not too much. Mainly just trying to cover up anything weird that pops up. I know that happens. Some areas can get a little taller than others. And it's okay if you got a couple of holes showing through. That way. But like I said, I think I might, might want something a little more prominent right in here that I can add some highlight to. There's a couple of places like that on the, uh, mm -hmm. the reference. Where they have just some kind of taller trees. Here and there. And maybe it's not all trees. Maybe there's buildings or something, you know. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect trees. Um, being, a, being that it is a marsh, try not to put Christmas trees. It's easy to paint those little cone-shaped trees if you're not careful. Try to avoid that. And don't get them too tall either, because again, taller is closer. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this is one of those magic parts here that actually makes your sky look like a sky. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna start on one side and work my way over and try not to have weird stuff. <laughs> Faster the better as usual. I do want it pretty solid at the base and I do want to cover all of my little extra you know places where I didn't get the paint to go. I got a little taller on that side. I think I'm going to try to get a little bit taller on this side. <laughs> Keep it even. Yeah, kind of pull everything in towards the middle a little. Okay. That is the first step. We're going to use a lot more black, but as you uh, 
if we'll go ahead and pull this tape off, you can see that that just that much makes a huge difference in it looking like a sky. So let's get that far. A little bit different. So I don't want you to copy this exactly. Don't try to copy this exactly. Anybody back there hear that? In the bag, don't try to copy this exactly. However, you do have to design your land so that you get depth, okay? We talked about how you can take measure halfway and then halfway of that mark and then halfway of that mark and each each step of the way it gets it you cut it in half Small yes. and that's how things go as they go in the distance that works for the sky and it works for the for the ground what you don't want is this that's what we get a lot of times you get this little <laughs> da -da 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 -da, and that's my laying on each side and that's not right even this where it gets small in the middle and gets big as it goes out that's not what we want that's might be a river but not a marsh okay the marsh is flat the whole thing's wet there's just grass growing here and there in patches it's going to look more like this so your patches up close um, are going to be bigger as they get further away your grass your grass in this section may be this tall that same blade of grass back here is going to be half that height mm -hmm. back here is going to be half that height you know what i mean yeah. that's you got to use that to create that depth so what i want to do is first design how do i want my uh, grass to look now I know I want to have some foreground grass here that kind of is a little taller on this side than it is on that side um, and all of this so I drew this line here and here all of the land above here we're just gonna make that black right now we'll come back and add all this later but we want to get all of that underpainting black including these streaks right here mm -hmm. in there first um, so what I want to do is pick a spot I'm just gonna say about here and I know I don't want perfectly straight lines so I'm gonna go up a little on that I know that I want um, that's where all of my zigzag my little small stuff is gonna be right in there so that's not one piece of land that's a bunch of stuff but it's gonna mm -hmm. come later and I got this piece here and I don't want a perfect zigzag zebra pattern through there either, but I do want a, a little chunk of land that comes out the side here. So maybe about, um, I, I think the, the land should be about here. I don't want to go all the way under my sun. I'd like to kind of stop there. The reason I put the sun there is because it was in the right measurements for the third. Uh, so I think I want to kind of stop right in here and let that land be kind of that shape. Um, and that's kind of the way this one is gives us plenty of room to have reflections down here my reflections are going to come down here a little further like that on this side this middle line is kind of where the water is <coughs> bottom is kind of reflections top is grass for now it's all going to be black um, again not too much water heavy thick black and I'm just using this fan brush because it's got a good flat edge to it. And the grass is going to be flat. And all I really want to do right now is just block that in. Um, <laughs> scary, isn't it? I'm like, all that work we did. Yep. And we could dodge this and make try to make little places to leave that showing through. But I think we'll do a better job just painting yeah. it on and covering it up later. Um, this bottom edge where the reflection is going to be we're going to pull that down a little bit over here where it's going to show mm -hmm. but kind of over here it's not it's not showing as much and it, it kind of it kind of has a little bit of a straighter edge to it i may just do it that way it's still a reflected you know grass in the water if that makes sense but as we get down here, I'm gonna pull some of that down. Now to do that, you just gotta be brave. <laughs> it's kind of a <laughs> water. You can pull downward or pull, tap it and go upward, however you, but I don't like the roundness of the way that brush yeah. looks. So I'm gonna kind of just pull some down. I don't like it being blobbed like that. <laughs> if you don't like it, wipe it off and do it again. Mm 
down is straight down though. It's not, you know, make sure you don't get carried away. Waves with the, in it. <laughs> I'm gonna get this cleaned out. Kind of pull up in that just a little bit. Spot. You know, that's kind of hard for us symmetrical people though. Yeah, right. Yeah, that might work even better if I can get a little bit of smeared look in there and then come back and clean the bottom of it up. I don't want all this down here. I need a dry paper towel now. But I don't want to lose my water completely right here for sure. But I like the way that gave me a little bit of a fade in to those. To that color. So this is just kind of a trial and error kind of thing. Yeah, kind of got to play with it. I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to take this wet brush, pull up into it a little more, just kind of let it run down, knowing that I'm going to wipe off this most of this down here. Again, this this kind of thing you definitely got to do quick. I've got two things going on. I've got to keep the bottom clean, but I also want to work on my, my shape here. So. Nice. I think I like that. If you're more comfortable doing this with a brush, by all means, and if it, if it looks bad, stop and dry it and start over. Yes, yes. Look how dirty, the, uh, how dirty it is in the original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I kind of like that. the look of that. I may dirty this up just a little too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a little bit of green. Yeah, I like that. And we're going to put some green on top of here, so you know, how, uh, how perfect that edge is. The, the neater it is, the worse it's gonna look. Hard to imagine that right now. But. Oh, was it? <laughs> Who was that to? <laughs> She's talking oh, to me. Yeah. You're talking to me right now. <laughs> you know how I am, with all my symmetrical. I'm okay, having a couple little watery streaks down there too. Okay, there's that part. <laughs> As I mentioned, I want a... I don't know why your wife sent you out to a shop. Yeah, I know. I'm getting used to painting in the studio. <laughs> this grass grows kind of the same height, so you don't have to be too um, wild at the top. You know, that that's it kind of looks like it's mm -hmm. all kind of the same height. When it comes out here to this edge where it stops, I don't want to come to a point. Right. I want to come to a. Now these reflections up here are a little, a little more exact, but I like how that water is mixing with it. But I like how it comes to a kind of a flat edge instead of coming out to a sharp point. If that water lets that bleed down a little bit, that'll be even better. And then last. Just this section in here now this is going to have a lot more stuff on top of it so I don't really I'm not real worried about it. just trying to get some color under it I'm gonna clean that off the table here in a second I lay a tarp on my floor at home <laughs> all right One of the things you just got to do it and play with it. Sometimes when you get those streaks like that, that uh, let's try this. Just softer brush with just some water. <laughs> Put a little bit of this on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get carried away with that, but. Like it's so good, I missed it. 
Yeah, just a little bit. Thank you. See how that works? <laughs> We're going to be putting colors on it, but right now. That's going to be so black. easy. Yeah, y'all got that. Some ugly green. Ugly green, I like it. We're going to make some ugly green. A lot of this green in this marsh is going to be this ugly green. That color right there, I don't know what you want to call that. That's not green, but it's it's a color we're going to use a lot. Cute. But just to show you how we get this, show you yeah. how we get this color, you're going to start with yellow. This is medium yellow. You're going to start with yellow. Obviously, if you add a little blue to it, it gets green, right? Mm -hmm. Very little blue. Very little. It doesn't take much. So then you get this pretty bright green that looks pretty. Don't use that. <laughs> so where did you start with? Hey, yellow. 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 Okay. With a, yellow and a little yellow and blue makes green. Yeah. I mean blue. Get mellow yellow first. The, um, <laughs> we're going to put a touch of white in it because if you do not, it won't cover. If you don't put some gesso in it, it'll just be clear. It'll be see-through. So we get a little bit of, little bit of uh, gesso in it. Then, here's the magic. And this is the part that makes it ugly. Vermilion. Vermilion is what's going to make it the right shade. And see, i got three colors here. Um, this first one, and it doesn't take much of that at all. Oh, that's from Robin the Puke. <laughs> that pukey, orangey looking color there. We're going to use it a lot. If you notice, in here, this color is in here a lot. It's there. It's up here. Um, it's right there. Mm -hmm. So where the sun is here, and I've already kind of started ahead, where the sun um, is in the middle, you're going to get more of this orange glow. And so I wanted to put one layer on so you could see what the difference was when you do one layer, then you come back and do another layer, it shows up a lot more. But I only want to do the treetops. Imagine, you know, this light shining out. You only want to do the surfaces that the light is going to hit. Right? So on... This side of the sun, I'm only going to paint the left side of the trees. Right? And remember, don't end up with Christmas trees. Hmm. Don't let this make your trees uniform. Hmm. And on the left side of the sun, I'm going to paint the right side of the trees. Yes. 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 Left, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right, left. <laughs> left or right? Wait. What? <laughs> Not thinking about too much about the tree shape, just really thinking about where the sun's going to hit on that top edge. Now, I do have my little extra tall here tree. We'll spend a little bit of, make sure it gets plenty of sunlight. Let's see. The next color, though, is a little more green. And that's just a little more yellow, a little more blue, less, less vermilion. I already had some made here. As you get further away from the sun, you get a little more green. Okay. So that color... And for each layer, you do a little less paint, right? Mm -hmm. So that color carries me a little further away. And as I get even further, then I work into the regular, more of a regular green, which is just yellow and blue, less, less vermilion. But it's always going to have a touch of white in it, or it's not going to show up at all. This army green is as far as the vibrant, you know, green colors. That may have a little too much white in it. But as we get out here to the end, and I don't want a clear line where I stopped one color and started the other. That's why I'm going back over some of these other ones. But just here and there. And like always, you want to focus your your best work kind of towards the, the focus, the middle. Um, you want to have a little bit of green in here just to make it not look so weird. I don't want to be able to tell where my orange stops, my green starts. And don't cover up all your black. Your black is the shadow, and that's got to be, got to be there. All right, so that is the first first round of this. Now, these same colors, let get a smaller fan brush here. These same colors are our grass colors, and we can come back and 
and uh, adjust these somewhat, but I want to treat them kind of the same way. The closer they get towards the center, I want them to be more orange, and the further they get out to the edge, I want more green. Now, this, uh, like this little piece of land here, it, you know, you, you can't really even tell on here where it starts and where it stops, but I think um, it's probably, you know, something like that, right? See that line? You can barely see it. So I'm going to come back up here and start putting some of this grass in here just to that spot. A little more orange. And I don't care that, I mean, I do want some of the black showing through, so I don't, don't want to cover it all up. See how that works, kind of bringing it down to this line. And then just beyond the line with just water. Just bring some of it down. We'll come back in later and put an actual line in there that'll separate the grass from the water and that'll look, it'll make even more sense. They don't want a hard line there just yet. Is that working? Mm -hmm. Again, orange as it goes towards the middle, more green towards the outside. This top part, I just want to get in there to begin with. I'm going to get that a little bit more blue. Maybe a little bit more darker. Maybe a little bit of a darker color to start with. <laughs> now, I don't want grass tips back here. Um, too much yeah, it's too much. It Just want to kind of scrub that out. I don't mind the bottom just being soft on this. I'm going to work all that in later. That's kind of green. While I'm in this green, I'm going to go ahead and do this side the same way. Kind of just going to scrub it out. I don't really need a hard line between that, it, at least out there. In the middle, in the middle, we'll put a line because it's where the water is, mm -hmm. but out here it don't matter. Now, as I get further in, I'll come into some of that ugly color. Same on this side. But this is where we're going to have all our water zigzagging through here later. And in the middle, Always blending it out. And some spots are thicker than others, and some spots are, you know, different color. That's okay. That looks it looks right. It looks like there's some other grasses there. <coughs> we'll zigzag some stuff through there later. Um, this is <coughs> this is still just blocking in. We'll come back and put some more detail on the grass. The most. Last one, and then we'll do this foreground and then let y'all go, and that'll be it for tonight. We'll finish this next week, by the way. Um, we will have a lot taller grass up here. I do want a little more white in this foreground because I want it to be more, more solid. A little closer. So it's got a little more vibrancy to it. Again, we'll push up into that. So this is how your plate should look. Instead of having individual colors, you just kind of <laughs> just have one blend of one side to the other, where you can keep mixing and going back and forth between the between the colors. See, it's not covering good because I don't have enough white in it in that part. So I can add a little white. 
it doesn't change the color all that much but it makes it cover a lot better and again in the center under the sun I want the more orange color down the middle all right so that is our grass blocked in the only part that really has a heavy black leftover is over here a little strip over there and a little on this side I can see the black up through here I might put a little more green there don't really need to see it too much through there we'll come back and do a lot more to that all right we get that far does that already look like a marsh yeah. that's a big transformation from when we came we in paint here the right? trees the green and I didn't even get any paint but um, let's talk about it first we got to put this this really thin line right here Mm -hmm. that tells us where the water stops oh, yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. the land starts yeah. we're going to put that in here and if you notice mine kind of ended up with a bow to it I don't like that I'm going to straighten that out so the first thing I'm going to do is measure will you get me some uh, just some gesso for now if you don't mind you <laughs> he ain't going to tell me he's going to show me he's going to show you bro yeah. this, is not, this is a show now that line doesn't have to go all the way across actually I don't want it to go all the way across but I do want it to be straight for where it does go and it's at about eh, I want to say seven and a quarter I can see that here by marking it in a few places I can uh, pull a line across there and it'll look right it's so dark I have to get down here with it where did it go one moment Now, to put that line in, is it hot in here? Is that just me? You know, more than me. I turned the air, I didn't turn it, I turned the little vent thing on it. So Give me some paint. <laughs> All right. Bob Ross has his paint set up. You do. <laughs> just say it. If you, you want to try that for this perfectly straight line, you could use the ruler. Hold it up there and use the ruler to paint. I've even put paint on the edge of the ruler and just kind of touch it on it. That might be, that might be the best way to do this. And I was, but in other ways, just get a little paint on the edge and kind of scrape it across uh -huh. there. Which I'm gonna do for some of the, for some of the water we have in here. But I think for this, just to show you how this works, take a little bit of paint, put it on the edge of this ruler. It's really gonna cheat. That's, that's probably too much paint. I've never seen Bob Ross with a ruler in his hand. I was like, I don't think he never. knows what a ruler is. He don't have one of them little fancy things made up either. Called the Fibonacci? Whatever. Nice. It doesn't have to go all the way across them. Yeah. And if it's splotchy and has a little yeah. spots in it, that's even cooler. So that's one trick. Um, so we mentioned before, and I'm doing this straight gesso, but it's not going to stay white. We're going to color it. Mm -hmm. um, but I want it to be super white first so that those colors will be bright. Mm -hmm. But we mentioned how for distance, you know, if you're closing this gap of distance here, you first cut it in half, yeah. and then cut that in half, mm -hmm. and then that in half, that in half, that in half. So I'm keeping that in mind when I go to put, uh, when I go to put these little, uh, here and it doesn't have to be exactly like this my ruler already made a couple shapes for me there but I want some of it to be I want, I want a lot of it to be kind of right here in the middle mm -hmm. okay <coughs> using the 
palette knife helps me make straight lines. We want these lines to be horizontal. None of it should be right. curved downward at all. I want to do, since I did make a little extra land over here, I do want to have some some spot over here that where, where there's a little more water showing. Some marsh. Yeah. I can clean it up later. I'm just going to get it in there for now. When you're using this knife, you kind of roll the paint up on there, hold it flat, and uh, just the only real thing is I want to make sure that I want to, I want to remember those angles. I want it real close together further back. Mm -hmm. and as I come forward, I can space them out a little bit. Good bit right here in the middle. What did y'all do to Brian last week? Is that right? I ain't said a word the whole time. Yeah, I don't know what y'all done to him. his own personal yeah. thing. Y'all broke him while I was gone. I don't know. <laughs> you get worried about one day. I'm worried about you, brother. <laughs> If you try to do this with a brush, you really need a really thin yeah. liner brush. Got a little much there, but I can make that puddle a little bit. In this center part, I really want this to be a pretty good bit of water that comes down and almost meets with the rest of my water here. Mm -hmm. But noticing that all the lines are this way. I don't have any 45s, you know. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty good. Um, let me come this way just a bit more. I'm going to come back and tweak that with a brush later. But that's going to dry. While I'm in here with my, my palette knife, just the thinnest little amount of it. This is a good time to go ahead and decide where your where your water lines are. And again, flat, flat. You just kind of use this like a knife, just kind of cut it. You can also take your finger and just kind of smear mm -hmm. horizontal. Everything's got to be completely horizontal. I'm going to come back and put some more grasses on top of that so I don't mind that that got a little thick. Thin line of that up here. I think I want to get. Sorry, I'm not trying to turn away from y'all. Let that grass have some levels to it. Turn kind of where my edges of my grass are. You don't have to define every one of them. See how it's just broken and just kind of messy looking. That's best. If you start with it kind of messy looking, it's easier to come back and clean it up. If it's perfectly smooth and everything, then trying to make it look natural is harder. Yep. A little more. Tiny little areas. This, this knife like this, you can turn it either way. See so you can get some smaller some more stuff out here. There's little spots where the water's showing through. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to dry things. One, I got some uh, <laughs> some titanium white here. Oh, okay. Since mine is dry, and I got a little flat brush. Mm -hmm. Right here where the sunset is going to be the brightest, I need this white to be the brightest. Uh -huh. So I'm going to take a couple of layers of this yeah. to get that as bright as it can be. Just, just kind of in the middle there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mess up my nice jagged edges as much as I can conserve them, but I do need this to be super bright. Let just let those be together. And so, I'm gonna do that, let it dry, do it again, let it dry, do it again. Until it's just solid, solid, super white. The rest of it outside of this area mm -hmm. is fine. I'm gonna, uh, that'll be white enough I'm gonna come back to this and make it good and bright. Put that paint on that 
think. Cover. Okay, but while I'm waiting on that to dry, I got some of my my green. Now I got some blue in it. <laughs> good job, good job. My green made. That was just. I need some more anyway. It's mostly yellow with a little touch of blue, a little touch of uh, gesso in that as well, and the tiniest amount of vermilion tiniest. to make it a little uglier. And this again, we want to keep the redder, more orange stuff towards the middle. But this is where I, I got my small fan brush. This is where I want to kind of individualize some of this yeah. grass. I don't necessarily need to go all the way down with it like that. Just kind of get the tops of it because it's got the shadows mm -hmm. under the bottom. So I can kind of oh. fade Let's that see. out a little. What I don't want to do is go over and paint all the grass again. <laughs> we already got grass. This is just this is just little individual kind of blades, kind of isolate a few little blades here and there. Make a little more grass, then we'll come back and do that again with the uh, liner brush to do some individual mm -hmm. stuff. Back here, it's much smaller. This is all part of creating those uh, little shorelines. The mm -hmm. And if you have white that you need to cover up, now's the time to... I didn't want to cover that up, but I want to have some grass in front of it. <laughs> now's the time to kind of do that. Yeah. Little, again, it's, it's accents and highlights, so you don't want to do the entire thing. Um, just a couple places where it looks weird and needs some separation. And this is a, a shade or two lighter than the other that was behind there and I'm mostly keeping it to the to the part that's uh, in the front edge of this grass mm -hmm. not really going back into the field too much with it just kind of front edge stuff I'll make it a little more orange that's a lot more orange <laughs> my ugly color here. Mm -hmm. Put the stuff right in the middle. Make it a little wider too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's different. It's a little bit, you know, challenging, but it's been fun. Got that. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy I'm like boy. I guess so. He always wants more. Bob Ross, if you would have learned how to paint the bear, that you could paint many bears. <laughs> this is more about just putting color in there. Yeah. While I'm in this color, and a good way to do it is kind of just dry it off the brush a lot. But I also want to put a little bit of that in my in my water and maybe even come back and just pull it down with a wet brush. I'm going to do something else to that line. I might just come back with some black. That that white got a little too out of out of hand there. Actually, let me go ahead and fix that while I'm in here. If you do have weird areas like that, a little bit of black is all it takes to straighten those edges up. The bottom of the grass I do want to be kind of kind of black, kind of dark. Even the bottom of what's there. Especially on this first little island here, it's kind of the most visible. Spend a little more time on it, probably making the uh, the shape right. Mm -hmm. I will 
once that is dry, I'll come back with some uh, white and clean that very front edge up a little bit. Uh, but it's good to have that dark right at the bottom of it. Uh huh. I don't want to get too carried away with the black either. And if you're real careful, <laughs> and do just the tiniest amount, you can accent a little bit of dark in there as well. Bob, I'll teach you that. Uh -huh. I think boys been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> he been in the holy water. <laughs> yeah, probably should ask me to read. <laughs> very very uh, edge where okay, the. Uh, that looks good. Yeah. You don't need much of it. You definitely don't need to do it everywhere. Right. But a little bit darker it's at the definitely edge. Definitely coming to life, isn't it? Yeah, these little these little details do a lot. Well, I got you. And that's still drying up there. The, one of the last things we're going to do is tint that water, and it's going to be, it's going to make a big difference. Um. <laughs> Enough Come more out. in there. Come out. <laughs> you use a liner brush, and I'll do a, I'll do a good bit of this up front because this last this front two inches here is where a lot of the detail is going to go. But I do want to put my highlight, once we color this water, I'm going to put a little bit more water, more color down in here. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself down here at the bottom. Well, this will be kind of the last thing I do. But just to show you what we're going to do is put some individual grasses down here. And um, I want to do some, some cattails down there. Just get one of those in here. When you're trying to pull up individual grass on top, it's got to be a different shade than what's below it, but not by much to show up. Mm -hmm. I will probably do a good bit of this, give some good detail to this, because it's got a good amount of, amount of contrast here in the front. But as for the, uh, I didn't get any brown, I'll make myself some here a dark color for this. And again, I don't want to do too many of these, and if you want to go crazy, you can even kind of measure, let's say from there to there, let's put one kind of right in here. Let's go real crazy and get a real measurement of it. Kind of right in here. things in here. That would be the star of the show right there in the middle. Now, you're stressing thinking, how are you going to connect those two? They don't have to connect exactly. You can just kind of go towards it. Your mind will connect it. Yep. Those kind of things actually, they get kind of down in the grass a little bit like that. They kind of. Yeah, I, I don't want to do anything huge sticking way up. I'm just going to do a few of that here, a few down there. Just um, I'll probably come back on top of that with some darker, just some darker blades on top, just to. You know, light dark, light dark, all the way across. Focusing, you know, keeping the focus on the middle. I don't want to distract, but you do need more detail in the foreground. Mm -hmm. But that's what's left. Um, also, on my little, I'm just gonna let y'all go and finish, finish up. One thing I've <laughs> wanted to do since the beginning is to take, do a little bit of, uh, extend this out just a little bit. Let's see if I can do that without making it huge mess.
inside of it. It ended up being exactly the same. But I'll come back on that with some uh, with some white in between, and that'll look like something maybe a little green to um, show it off there. But a couple of little individual stuff here and there makes a big difference for right for detail. <laughs> yeah. um, I was gonna do some birds off in the distance, but again, I was gonna play with my play with my measurements here. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. I think they'd be much lower on the horizon, horizon. if they're going to be. Okay. Okay. Something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's the little details. Just go from there. A lot of detail in the foreground. A little bit, more, uh, you know, less further you go back. Um. Work on this for a little while. We'll come back in just a minute when this is completely dry. Uh, medium yellow. I got some yellow. I got, oh, uh, take a touch of vermilion. And maybe make two colors here. That black creeping in there. That's too much for me. Give me a little bit more of that yellow up there. I soiled all my yellow. Soiled it. Shame on you. I've got a couple of shades of this that I want to work with. I'm not putting any gesso in it. It's not going to need any. So I think... My sky is not really that yellow. I got so I need to go a little more towards the orange on mine. That you need to look at your to kind of see where you need to be for mm -hmm. this color. Then it's just paint with water. I'm not putting any um, gesso in it, like I said, because I just want to paint over this area and even if I get on the grass a little bit look how that works mm -hmm. it just makes that grass look like it's glowing a little bit too mm -hmm. kind of push that color onto the water isn't that neat mm -hmm. I, can, I put a little extra white down here but I'm going to come down here too and continue that tint a little further down the water water too And my, my yellowish orange color on the outsides, it gets towards the middle. But the, the gesso underneath will do a lot of that for me, mm -hmm. since I made it brighter in the middle. When I get, let's see, I think I'm going to have to make some with a little bit of gesso just to make it a little bit wider. When you do have gesso in it, you got to be more careful not to go over the grass. Mm -hmm. Not as much, anyway. Bring that yellow out a little more. My sun's over here, so. Keep the orange a little bit more that way. Now I've got these other colors in here, too, if I want to. Put a hint of some of that pink orange color in there that's mm -hmm. yeah that works mm -hmm. um, gotta kind of look at what's above it where you want to have what colors like that as I come down into my bright area I want to use paint more watery because I want a lot of that light stuff to show through. It doesn't take much. And this is a soft bristle brush that I'm spreading this on here with because I don't want to pull any paint up with it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really being real careful not to paint over the, the grass because you see what it does. It kind of mm -hmm. looks right in that grass. Just going a little bit at a time. 
sure my colors cohesive with what's above. As I get down towards the front, you just want to go heavier on the water. And all this under here is nice and dry, so that's a that's a key to this washing. That right there. Vertical strokes through here. Um, trying to be super neat either. What a difference that made, though. That's all there is to it. Yeah, that's fun. I told you that's what had some magic spots to it. 